Hey guys, I'm Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and we're here with the lovely Mia Blakeman and we've been shooting a lot of images using fill light and we started having this conversation off camera about do you have a preference on where you place your fill light? Do you like to place your fill light behind your camera or off on the shadow side or on the same side as your key light? So in today's video, I'm going to place our fill light in every possible position and see which one looks best. This video is sponsored by ACDC's photo editing software, Photo Studio Ultimate 2023. Photo Studio Ultimate is the flagship in raw editing and organizing software from ACDC. And in this brand new 2023 update, you now have access to more AI editing tools than ever before. AI Face lets you not only retouch skin with the click of a button, but you can also adjust facial features like brightening the eyes or even adding makeup. With the adjustment sliders, you can dial in the retouching perfectly as little or as much as you like. Want to quickly and easily replace a sky in your landscape photos? No problem. The new AI actions make it incredibly easy to mask, replace, and adjust the sky to your liking regardless of the weather that you had on the day the image was taken. Other features include photo merging for panoramic images, high dynamic range to pull out the maximum amount of detail from your shadows and highlights, and focus stacking, which increases the maximum amount of depth of field when shooting really wide landscapes or intricate macro photography. Finally, ACDC is one of the industry leaders when it comes to managing and organizing your digital files. Photo Studio Ultimate 2023 expands on this workflow even more by adding more options for finding, sorting, moving, keywording, and sharing your images across a variety of platforms. And as always, the Photo Studio Ultimate Suite allows you to either subscribe month to month or buy a full copy outright with no additional payments down the road. If you wanna try Photo Studio Ultimate 2023 for free for 30 days, click on the F-Stoppers link in the pinned comment or the description below. But for now, let's get back to our fill light experiment. All right, so the main reason for a fill light would be to bring up the shadows in an image that's got a lot of contrast. And so right now I have one of these Profoto three foot Octaboxes acting as our key light. Let me go ahead and take a photo just with that light. We have Mia here on a white seamless backdrop, conveniently in a black dress where there's gonna be a lot of shadows. And as you can see, this is a really standard, nice portrait. We have nice soft light coming across her face. We do have some shadows on the right side of the frame. And now you might say, well, we need to add a little bit of fill light to bring out some of those shadows and give us the highest quality raw file where would you place your fill light? I've heard photographers debate, oh, it needs to be on axis with your camera so that you can't tell where it's coming from. And then I've heard others say, oh, you want a light from the shadow side so that you're actually throwing light into those shadows and giving the most amount of detail. So right here, I have another three foot Octavox that's gonna act as our fill light. So for the first light, I'm just going to place this eye level with our model. I'm gonna stand right below it. And I'm just gonna take one shot here. Now, some photographers say that this light should be more even with the camera. It shouldn't have any directionality at all. So I'm going to bring it back and lower it just a bit. And let's take another shot with it right behind the camera. Next, let's light from the same side as our key light so that the light sources are all coming from one direction, which might look a little more natural. Let's place it to the right. So now we have two directions of light, but maybe it's best to have your fill on the shadow side. Let's take the exact same photo. And then just to really mix it up, let's place our fill perpendicular to the model and light only the shadow side. All right, so now that we have six different images, let's look at all of these on the computer. All right, guys, so here we are. We're in the post-production office, and I want to throw up all six of these images quickly so that you guys can take a guess of which one maybe is your favorite. Let's go ahead and knock off some of the more extreme examples and narrow it down to just these three. Which one do you prefer? Go ahead and say it out loud. I think I definitely prefer the image with the fill on the same side as the key light, but let's go ahead and open these and look at them a little closer. So I've gone ahead and opened everything in ACDC's Photo Studio Ultimate 2023. You can see that here. Let me go ahead and select all six of these. I'm going to right click, come down to process, and let's throw these into a stack, load files into a stack. All right, so now we have all of these in a stacked layer. I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift and select the bottom ones so that all six are selected. 
Let's come up to layers. Let's go to auto align layers. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna get all six of these images to show up in a stack that we can then turn each layer on and off and we can see her face in the exact same position. And I'm going to basically just turn these on and off. Let's start with this image here. Number one, this is the image with no fill light. If I turn this on and off and look at image number two, which is the fill slightly above the camera, but still on axis, it's giving the flattest light with just a little bit of directionality. If we toggle these two on and off, you can see such a huge difference. Recently, I made another video seeing if fill light made a huge difference in your images versus just bumping up the shadows with the shadow slider. And pretty much unanimously, everybody said, yes, add a fill light. And you can really see the difference here when I turn these on and off. So there's no doubt adding a fill light still allows you to keep some of the shadows and directionality of your key light while also bringing in a lot more detail into our frame. You can really see that here on her neck and you can see that on the entire right side of her face. So now let's go ahead and toggle between the on-axis light that's above the camera versus right behind the camera. If you were to zoom in on this picture, you can actually see the little silhouette of me, which probably does remove some of the power from our light, so you have to keep that in mind. While we're talking about power of the light, I didn't mention that our key light was set to the correct exposure. And then all of the fill light examples that you're gonna see, I had this about, I think it was one stop lower than the key light. So as you look at these images, you're gonna notice that a lot of the highlights don't necessarily get brighter, but the shadows do, and that's just because I have that one to two ratio going on. The biggest difference I see here is uh, her neck down here. If we have the light a little bit higher, the fill light is not capable of filling in the shadow under her chin as well. When I lower it here, right behind the camera, it's able to push just a little bit more of that light under her chin. Honestly, that's really the only big difference that I can personally see. Now let's move on to our fill light from the left side on the same side as our key light. For this uh, comparison, let's go ahead and look at the fill light that was high on axis and compare it to the one that we moved off to the side. I think this is gonna be a more fair comparison. So we're literally just moving our fill light just a few feet over to the left. These are very, very subtle, but if I look at the neck down here on her left, our left, looking at the image, and flip this on and off, the image that has the key light and the fill light on the same side, this image here, it just seems to have a little bit more tonality and directionality from the left with less shadows on the left, and then it's also throwing just a little bit more shadows on her right. I think having the fill light on the same side as the key is just a little bit more even and natural looking. I don't know that you could pick these two out of a lineup unless you looked at her eyes. So now let's see what happens when we move the key light to the opposite side of the face, the shadow side of the face. So between these two, I'm comparing the off-axis fill on the left to the off-axis fill on the right. And you can see this makes a huge difference. Now suddenly the whole shadow side of her face is being lifted up. And because the ratios are one to two, our right side of the frame, the shadow side of the frame, is just a little darker. It's not true 45-45 lighting. They're not one-to-one -one ratio, but it's starting to feel like that. It's starting to feel just a little flatter. It's starting to get more into that beauty look maybe. If you feel like the shadows are a little too harsh for our model or that this might be a little too edgy or moody with the shadows, filling them in from the shadow side does make a pretty pronounced difference. Of course, it's also pulling out all the detail here on her cheek. It's also starting to give more definition on these muscles in her neck. You can really see the one on the left where you can't on the image where the fill light is on the same side as the key light. And then finally, let's move to the fill light completely perpendicular. Now she does change her face pretty significantly in this image. And the biggest difference I see here is kind of the wrap and the shadow. If the fill light is a little closer to the camera, you can see the shadow is kind of ending the edge going right through her eye, right over her cheekbone, right into her forehead. But if we move the key light all the way perpendicular, you can now see that there's really not a shadowed edge there. You know, maybe the shadowed edge is falling right on the hairline. So it's making her face a little bit more round and less chiseled. I think for certain, can I say that for certain? This is my least favorite image of the bunch. 
So what does this all mean? For me personally, I think this has settled the debate that I don't think I would ever put the fill light on the opposite side of the key light. I would never put the fill on the shadow side. I don't say ever, but you know, in this comparison, I think that produces the most flat looking imagery. And it really does start to remind me of that really amateur lighting setup that so many photographers fall victim to, where you put your key light over here, you put your second light over here, you set them to one to one or one to two, maybe even one to three, and you just pound your subject with light on both sides. It really flattens the image and it starts to make it look, the only way I know how to describe it is just cheaper. It just doesn't look as professional. Now between the on-axis fill, the higher versus the lower, this one's difficult. There does seem to be a little bit of an exposure difference. And I think when I lowered the light, part of my body is blocking the light. And so this image here with the light lower is a little bit darker. So that's kind of affecting, you know, the way that I'm rating this. But I do think I prefer the little bit of shadow under the chin. Again, I don't know that I could pick this out of a lineup, but if I had to choose my favorite, I'd probably say the fill light just slightly higher than the camera. So we'll go with that. And then now comparing my two favorite, slightly above the camera and on the same side as the key light, which one of these two do I prefer? Ooh, it's so subtle to my eyes. I'm gonna just look at these without knowing which one I'm looking at. And I think I like this one the most. And that is the fill off to the same side as the key light. It's just throwing the shadows a little bit more in the same direction. All right, so what does this all mean? What does it mean? Well, for me, two takeaways. I think I prefer my fill light on axis, but raised up a little bit above the camera. But even more than that, I believe from this experiment, I like my fill moved over to the side and coming from the same direction as my key light. So if you kind of split the difference, maybe straight above the camera and your key light, go right between the two, that seems to be the best location for fill light for this particular shooting situation. Although I do have to say, going back to the image with no fill light, that looks pretty fashion-y too. And I love the shadows and it just adds a lot more drama to the image. I think shooting an image without fill light is totally acceptable too. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Is there a particular place where you like to put your fill? Right behind the camera, maybe off to the side like I'm suggesting, or somewhere that we didn't even test here. And I'd like to know what your favorite ratio is between your key light and your fill light. Is it like this where it's one stop lower than your key light? Or do you like to make it even more subtle and drop it down maybe two stops, maybe even three stops? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. Also head over to fstoppers.com where we have free daily content. And if you wanna learn from some of the best photographers in the world, head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can check out our full length tutorials. If you don't know what type of photography you're really interested in, we've recently created the Well-Rounded Photographer, which is a tutorial featuring eight different genres of photography and eight different instructors. It kind of gives you a little taste of everything and you can figure out exactly what your specialty should be. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get back to the shoot and start working with that fill light.